Hello YouTube, welcome to part 7. In today's video we are going to finish up with our ADB class. I'll try to move pretty quickly as I don't have a lot of time, so uh, let's go ahead and create our uh, public method that's going to return ArrayList of the logcat processes that are currently running on the device. And let's just capitalize that. And we're going to create a local variable that's going to hold our array of strings that's going to come from our command and we're going to do uh, command adb minus s because we execute it on a specific device right and then we're going to tap into the shell we're going to go and execute our top command once and then we're going to grip uh, by case insensitive log cat value and then we're going to make sure to split this by new line and let's create a new variable that's going to hold our processes and that's just going to be a new array list and then we're going to iterate through the output line by line And here I'm going to say processes, add line, and I'm going to split this by a space. <clears throat> and I'm, I'm interested in the very first value that comes in that, uh, in that array. So, but this can produce some values that I don't want. So I'm going to do something else. I'm going to say remove all. And arrays as list and I'm going to pass in the values that I don't want to have in my processes list. So once uh, we're done with that we're going to return our processes and our utility method is done so let's go ahead and create another method that's going to return an object. This object is just going to be the PID of the pro of the logcat process that was started. So this method is going to be called start logcat, and we need uh, to have uh, the ID of the logcat. So we're going to call it uh, log ID. Uh, this is going to be used when we are saving a log, and you know hopefully this will be also used when you want to like pull the log from the device. Uh, you will be able to reference this with this ID. And then we're going to also have another string argument that's going to be for a grab command because we want to make this method uh, a little bit more versatile so we're going to give the ability to filter our log and this will support that. So the first thing we're going to do here is we're going to create an array list and we're going to uh, check which PIDs were running before uh, we actually created a new logcat process. So we're going to reference our method that we created, get logcat processes, and then we're going to create a new thread and we're going to call this thread logcat, and that's just going to be a new thread. Then we need to create new runnable. And inside of this runnable, we are going to create some logic. We're going to say if grep equals null, then we're going to run this command. Whereas else, we're going to run another command. But let's go ahead and finish this command first. So it's going to be an adb minus s plus our device ID. And then we're going to go inside the shell and we're going to create a log cat and then we're going to run the log cat with an argument to also have the timestamps for all of the events in the log. So we're going to save thread time and we're going to save our log to SD card and I'm going to just use the log ID and my extension is going to be .txt. Now if we're actually running with a grep command in here. I'm going to say pipe grep minus i, so it's case insensitive, and then I'm going to uh, pass in 
the grep command right in here. <clears throat> now once that's done, we can go ahead and give the name to our logcat process or thread. I'm going to say set name and I'm going to just use the log ID that we passed in. And now we can go ahead and start our logcat process. Now, once we started the logcat process, we're not actually interested in it anymore because the process on the device has started. So whether or not this thread is live or not, we don't care. So we can actually go ahead and interrupt it. We're going to create another variable that's going to hold our PIDs after we started the logcat process. So we're going to go ahead and say get logcat processes one more time. <clears throat> and then we're going to use our timer that we created in some other video. And we're going to declare a new timer. And then we're going to make sure to start this timer. And now we're going to do a while loop that's uh, and in the while loop we're going to say while timer is not expired and we're going to give it 10 seconds. So we're giving 10 seconds for the logcat process to get going, which is a lot of time. If you want, you can actually reduce that to maybe 5 seconds. Um, so we're going to check our PID before size. And the PID before size, basically, if we had some PIDs, um, if we had uh, logcat processes running uh, prior to starting this uh, logcat process, we are going to say PID after remove all PIDs from before. Okay, and then we're going to say if PID after size is over than zero, then we have you know, we started some logcat processes, so we can stop this loop. But if that's not the case, then we're going to update our PID after list, and we're going to say get logcat processes here. <clears throat> but most of the time, this is going to be the case. I haven't had uh, this happen too much. It starts the logcat process pretty quickly, so once we exit the while loop, we're going uh, we're gonna to check PID, uh, PID after size to make sure we started only one <clears throat> only one logcat process and if that's the case we're going to uh, return we're going to return PID after index 0 but if that's not the case if we created multiple uh, processes. So if it's more than one process, we're going to throw an exception. I'll just throw a runtime exception, and I'm going to say multiple logcat processes were started when only one was expected. And then if that's not the case, <clears throat> so if nothing started here, then we're going to throw another runtime exception. And we're going to say failed to start logcat process. So now this method is ready to be used. But uh, once we start a logcat process, it's good to be able to stop it as well, right? So let's go ahead and create another public method that's not going to return anything. And we're going to call it stop logcat. And here we're just going to execute one command, and that's going to be adb minus s because we are running this command on a specific device. And I'm going to tap into the shell, and we're going to tell uh, the device to kill our PID. Okay, and the PID we're actually going to pass in uh, through here, and it's an object. So, like that. So now we can go ahead and start a logcat and stop the logcat whenever we need to. So just to test this, let's do let's uh, annotate this with test public 
avoid call it test and then let's do uh, sysout print of let's see let's call it processes uh, prior to starting new log uh, log cat get log cat processes and then let's do uh, start log cat and we're gonna start this log cat uh, the ID this log cat is going to be, let's just call it one, and we're not going to be grepping by anything. So then we're going to say sysout print. Oh, actually, we're going to store uh, as an object, sorry, object pid. <clears throat> we're going to store uh, the log that we started on this pid, and then I'm going to say started log cat on pid bid and let's just outprint some more processes here uh, so this is uh, processes after starting new log cat and then let's go ahead and kill or well, stop rather stop log cat on that bid and now we can also print the uh, logs uh, print a line for the uh, process that are running after stopping new log cat. Okay, and before I start this, I actually commented out our constructor here to be able to run the test because remember, it's otherwise it's like this. So I just commented this out, and I need to assign this ID for my device in the test. So I'm just going to say ID equal and let me just find the ID of my device here. Okay, so now if I run the test it should do everything we want it to do. Let's try it. Okay, so those are the processes that are running before restarting the new process. Now we see that we started our log cat on this process and now after we started and we checked the processes which are running on the device we can see it in, in the list and then we killed it right we killed it right here and then we're printing the um, uh, which process are running after that and we see that it's no longer in the list so it's done it was killed. So that's it for the video guys, congratulations, we're done with the ADB class, finally it took a long time to do. Um, thank you guys for watching, make sure to like the video and subscribe if you haven't, and see you guys in the next video, take care.